Hello everyone. With 3.2.1, Brella has increased in popularity significantly, and while I have a full guide on the weapon which you can find in the description below, this segment I kind of needed to talk about in a video. So I'm going to be talking about combat actions and combat options, and how exactly you should be fighting with Brella. So let's get into it, I have a lot of stuff to cover. Alright, so the main thing I'm going to go over here is mixing up your options. When you fight Umbrella, most of the time you'll see the same thing. A bit of shooting, and then mostly just shielding, shooting immediately, and dropping it. There's a lot more options, and while shooting, shielding, and then shooting again is a strong option at the basic level, when you start to get a bit higher up in ranks, there could be a lot more useful strategies and mix-ups that you want to implement. By only shielding and shooting a ton, you become very predictable, you have very linear movement and very limited strafing speed. Opponents can be able to punish that very well if they learn the matchup properly, and so you want to have more options. One of the best options that I see people not utilizing is dropping shield and swimming to reposition. You see shooters doing this a ton by just shooting, going in the ink, going shooting again, shooting again, etc. But you can do this with Brella shield as well. It's a pretty good option out of shield, especially because most people in the west will expect a shot after you shield. So being able to reposition could give you an edge. Either you're trying to get a better position, close the gap against a weakened opponent, or back up and try to find a better angle to re-engage or just abandon a firefight that isn't a good fight. So being able to utilize that option could be useful. It seems a bit awkward at first as you're pretty used to shielding and shooting a lot, but being able to drop your shield and move out of it can be a very nice option in certain situations and acts as a good mix-up option. A less practical option, but something that could be useful against, say, a blaster, is jumping and shielding. When you shield, you have a reduced jump height with your Brella. By jumping and shooting as you jump, you can shield at the very peak of your normal jump, something you can't do if you're holding shield and jumping. Because of this, you can block blaster shots that are shot above you. A good technique for blasters against Brella is to shoot above the Brella shield, as Brellas can strafe pretty fast and could hit the shot if it goes to the sides. This is your option against that. While it's still very predictable because you're jumping, Brella can get away with jumping better. It has no air RNG, and it can hold its shield to help properly cover its landings, which we'll get into more later. But overall, it's a good option for just occasionally covering blaster shots that try to go over your head, and can make your opponent rethink their angle when trying to fight you. Especially blasters, who when seeing their shot getting blocked as, they, as you jump above it, will actually start to reposition and maybe do things like shooting to the side, which again can be punished by you strafing and shielding it properly, or backing up and strafing back in. So, it can be a useful mix-up tool. Another thing that's less common, but you can actually just shield launch. While this seems less useful, let me paint a situation for you. Say you're having a fight with an opponent, and you get really weak. You're one hit off. You're almost about to round a corner and get out of the way. But you drop your shield, you get shot, and you die right before you could get behind your corner. Now, what you should be doing here is launching your shield, which will keep the hitbox up while you can start moving away. This will allow just a bit more frames of having protection for you to get behind a safe area and safely retreat. While launching shield is very risky because you're in a very weakened state when your shield is launched, if you're going to die by dropping your shield because you're very weak and you're near a wall, being able to shield launch to tank a bit more of your opponent's health can be very useful. Also remember, a launch shield has double HP, so in something like very thin hallways like Walleye Closed, it could be useful. Just don't spam it very much, as it's very, very, very punishable for an opponent who knows what they're doing. However, the main option I want to cover here is learning your opponents. Brella is really good at punishing opponents' patterns and mistakes. If you have an opponent who's constantly moving forward, you should be able to close the gap and use your shield to get a much quicker kill. If your opponent jumps a lot, you should be able to punish that. If your opponent strafes a lot, you should be able to read it and shoot to them to the side, get a better angle with your strafing speed. The main thing I want to cover is jumping opponents, because on Game 3 of Kelp Dome Splat Zones of Set to Destroy X vs Ghost Gaming, there was a very interesting 1v1 between Soren and Hexen, and I'll link a clip of that in the description. But... What happened here, basically, was Soren was fighting Hexen. What Soren did with Enzap was just jumping slightly upward to the left and the right and shooting at Hexen's shield. Hexen tried to punish the jumps by constantly shooting at the peak of Soren's jump. However, this constantly either hit the outside hit of Brella, which was very weak, or did no damage at all and completely missed. This gave Soren enough time to completely break Brella's shield, which is very slow for an Enzap, and be able to kill Hexen. So what should you be doing against a jumping opponent? 
Honestly, jumping opponents are one of the best things for Brella to engage. What you should be doing is shielding while in the air, and when you land, you have a set trajectory. So what you should be doing is shielding right as they land to exactly where their feet are going to hit. As you can see, when I jump here, once I start descending, I can't really move very much. It's very linear and very easy to predict where I'm going to go. So what Hexen should have been doing against Soren is shielding and then shooting as Soren landed. This would have allowed Hexen to get a pretty easy kill, as jumping again is very punishable. But because Hexen wasn't really prepared for this mix-up, he played the engagement wrong and Soren got a nice looking kill. Overall, reading your opponents can be very useful for any weapon, but Brella has a lot of different tools with shielding, strafing around, mixing it up with swimming, etc. to punish it very well. It can punish opponents', opponents mistakes when they miss by shooting and then immediately going back to shielding so they can make their shot seem absolutely worthless. This is part of what makes it really good against shooters. Whiff is a shooter against Umbrella and Umbrella notices it, you get punished and then the shield is back up immediately. This is the same thing for Dooley's and is part of why it's such a good matchup. But for Brella to progress further, you need to be able to have all of its options in mind. Sooner or later, people are going to be better at punishing this. And this alone isn't going to cut it. You can do this sometimes, and shooting and shielding is a pretty nice option, but you need to be able to have more mix-ups such as swimming, jumping, backing up, shield launching to retreating, just other options in general. It's important to be able to have good mix-up tools and learn your opponent and punish your mistakes. That is part of the main point of using Brella in combat, is learning your opponent, keeping your options in mind, and punishing every mistake. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in another video.